Hi everybody, a very, very warm welcome and good evening. Thank you so much for joining us, taking your precious time to join us this evening and uh, uh, giving us all your attention. Uh, my name is Sonali and uh, I'm here with Dr. Kritika today to talk to you about labor and delivery and having a safe birthing experience. Uh, this is a nice and long session. It's one hour, 30 minutes. And uh, we normally would like my pregnant mothers to not sit for such a long duration at one time. So we will give you a very short break in the middle also. But nevertheless, make sure that you have a lot of comfortable cushions and pillows, a big bottle of water and some snacks. So that in case you feel hungry, you can keep munching along the way. If you've realized you've been kept on mute during this session because we want a seamless experience, we don't want any disturbance. But you will be able to ask all your questions in the question box. So if you can see in the panel on your screen, there is a questions box. Please put all your questions there and uh, doctor and myself will surely answer before we close the session. So we are all good to start. Uh, just sit back, relax, enjoy. And uh, if your husband is available, make sure he's here too so that he can also benefit from this and he doesn't get stressed out when his little baby is arriving in the world all right thank you so much i'm going to just start sharing my screen so that we can uh, get started with this session all right so the conversation for today is as i said labor and delivery my name is Sonali. I'm a pregnancy, lactation and child nutrition counselor. I've been working in this profession for 16 and a half yeah. years. Uh, and it's been a really long journey for me uh, with more than 35,000 families. And I have kids of my own, too. So that is something which is, I think, my biggest, uh, uh, you know, um, qualification. I have two children of my own. I'm a storyteller. I love to give a lot of examples, a lot of stories, and etc. So uh, be prepared for that. Right? This session has brought, been brought to you by Cord Life. So I would like to say thank you to them as well for helping to arrange this platform. Cord Life is one of India's leading stem cell banks. Um, just to let you know, this session is being recorded. And after about 48 hours after the session, someone from the Cord Life, Cord Life team will get in touch with you and we'll be sharing the recording of this session along with a very special gift voucher. So all of these details I'm going to give you at the end of the session. And that's one of the reasons why you are going to stay with me for the entire duration. Please don't leave anywhere along the way. All right. So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about labor and delivery. When I was pregnant the first time, and I told you, I warned you, I'm going to tell you a lot of stories. When I was pregnant the first time and when I saw uh, that pregnancy test with those two lines, I was, of course, very excited, uh, but I was also very scared. And my biggest fear was labor, because the only things that we have heard about labor is it's painful, it's long, it's horrific, so many things, right? Nobody tells us nice stories, happy stories, uh, fun stories. Everyone only tells us the negative experiences. So it was a very scary thought for me also. But nevertheless, uh, the person that I am, I had decided that, OK, now I'm going to have this baby. So let me do it in the best possible manner. During pregnancy, these are some of the things that can help you as far as your birthing process is concerned. The first is a healthy diet. The second is regular exercise. So I'm going to speak a little bit about both these things very close towards the end of the session, because first we want to talk a little bit about how labor and delivery works. So we'll keep these two topics pending for the end of the session. The third thing is myths. All sorts of myths are rampant around the world of pregnancy, around labor, around babies also. And because of this, all of us are really, really scared worried, concerned. So let's bust a few myths around labor today. 
and the last but not the least is a stress free and relaxed mind when your mind is tensed when your mind is worried and you keep telling yourself i can't do it then trust me you will not be able to do it but if you can tell yourself i can and i will then the entire process becomes much more smoother think about it this way as per last statistics that i found there are 12 babies born every minute in india wow isn't that great so many babies are being born so many mothers are going through the birth experience how bad can it be right and that's exactly what i learned after my first delivery and then i went ahead and had a second baby as well so i don't think i look a little crazy that i would go through something painful horrific uh, problematic twice isn't it it is because i realized that labor was not something that i needed to be scared about right so relax yourself and take labor as a very positive experience the first thing that you should bear in mind is that pregnancy is supposed to be full term between week 37 to week 40 there are many myths around this the seventh month babies don't uh, will survive the eighth month babies don't survive any time in the ninth month if i deliver that is good so all of these things don't make sense we want your baby to get to full term we want your pregnancy to reach full term for a single pregnancy if you're carrying twins the story is completely different the doctor will guide you as far as your care is concerned but for a single pregnancy we want you to reach week 37 to week 40 now what happens if you deliver early the baby is a little underdeveloped and may need some help and assistance and this is not only going to cause difficulty to the baby but will cause you and your family a lot of stress as well how do i get to this full term very simple always always pay attention to the instructions that are being given to you at every doctor's checkup make sure that you follow that to the t don't fool around with your pregnancy be particular don't be scared be normal be natural but follow all the guidance that is given don't fall prey to myths and misconceptions and follow a very very healthy lifestyle which is going to help you to reach full term if pre labor happens if you start experiencing any of the labor signs which we are of course going to talk about very soon then you must report to your doctor immediately don't wait at home don't try to use any home remedies to try to stop things if you notice any of the signs make sure that you contact your doctor there is a very good possibility that your doctor may be able to help you to either stop labor or will also be help may help you to delay it a little bit so that the baby gets some time to mature and we can also give some medications to mature the lungs so there is a lot of hope in medical science now that there are so many options available but if we know about them we are ready for them so make sure that you report to the doctor immediately if you see any of the pre labor signs so what happens when it comes to pre labor right let me first talk about what what is the cervix so we have the uterus we've all heard about that that is the house of the baby inside the womb the other thing that is a part of the uterus is the part which opens into the vagina for convenience and the medical term for this is cervix so the cervix is the base of the uterus which opens into the vagina Now the cervix as you can see in this picture also is long it is thick and it is tightly closed so throughout pregnancy the cervix is long thick and tightly closed because it wants to make sure that there is nothing that can go out and nothing that can come in and what can come in infections right so the cervix remains tightly shut during the duration of pregnancy now when labor is about to start the cervix starts becoming a little softer the cervix starts becoming a little more loose and pliable and flexible so the mucus plug which is blocking the mouth of the uterus which is keeping that cervix tightly closed also starts to fall out so if you see a lot of mucusy discharge on your underpant then you know that there is a probability that you will go into labor really soon 
The other thing that may accompany the mucus plug is a little bit of blood. Now, when I say blood during pregnancy, it's, oh my God, it's like a very, very scary thought process. However, a little bit of brownish, pinkish discharge after week 37 is considered to be part of your mucus plug. If this bloody discharge is bright red, if it feels like the start of your period, then this is something to be concerned about and you must report this to the doctor immediately. The third thing that you might experience at this point of time is loose motions or multiple bowel movements. So we normally be good and we uh, we have been eating food at home. However, uh, yeah, sorry. However, we still seem to be getting loosies, multiple bowel movements, which was normally not the case. This is pretty normal. And this is a sign that you may be in free labor. You may also get intense spasmic back pain. And my moms who are in the third trimester must be looking at me and saying, what is she talking? I have back pain all the time. The back pain that you're experiencing right now is due to pregnancy because of the growing weight in the abdomen. That is a regular constant back pain. When you lie down, when you rest, when someone gives you a nice back massage, the back pain disappears. But the back pain that you start experiencing prior to labor and sometimes during labor also is like a spasm. It comes, it grips your lower back, makes you feel really uncomfortable and then goes away. Now, in spite of all of these discomforts or the discharge and the back pain and the loose motions and etc., you still have high energy levels. You might feel that you can conquer the world so mothers in the ninth month are very lethargic, they feel very tired, they feel exhausted, they don't feel like doing anything, but suddenly energy is at an all-time high. So what happens? Moms try to do everything possible, whether it's clean the house, finish off last minute shopping. I know I went for a movie one day prior to my baby's birth because I had all the energy in the world to watch that really late night show also. So that high energy levels are very common. I think God has given us that so that we can use that for labor, but we use that for all the wrong things. But anyways, we should have some fun also. So when you start experiencing any of these signs, you know that you're very close to labor. It doesn't mean that you are in labor. It doesn't mean you have to go rushing, but you should start being prepared. If your bag is not packed, this is a good time to pack your hospital bag. What happens when labor starts? When labor starts, you will start getting regular contractions. So if you start feeling period-like cramps, whip out a pen and paper and start writing down the timing. So what are we writing? We're going to write the start time of the contraction. We're going to write the end time of the contraction, right? Once you've written three or four of such contractions, then you will be able to ascertain what is the duration? That means how long is each contracting, contraction lasting? And the frequency. That means how far apart are, is each contraction coming? When you call your doctor, your doctor is going to ask you three questions. What is the frequency? What is the duration? And is there any discharge? Right? So when I'm talking about frequency and duration, the frequency and duration is... Maybe the contractions are coming very far apart in the beginning. The contractions are really short in the beginning. But as labor progresses, as you are closer to the delivery, the contractions will come closer and closer and closer together, and they will become longer and longer and longer. The absolute birth time, the contractions can come, and the contractions may also be lasting for about 90 seconds which is very very normal and one thing that we have also realized is that activity always increases the intensity so when you're getting contractions and then you walk around and your contraction becomes more intense then you know this is real labor but if your contraction subsides with activity then it is possible that it's a false alarm when should I go to the hospital? I mean, there are lots of lots of uh, reasons that we can give you, but let's give you a little breakup. When your contractions are regular, 
that means they are following a pattern when they are following a rhythm then that's the time that you should be going to the hospital also the timing when they are approximately 20 minutes apart is a good time for you to set off for the hospital the second situation is if your water bag breaks now we all know that what we have inside the uterus is amniotic fluid inside the amniotic sac which is water now when this water bag breaks the sterile environment of the baby is open so whether you have contractions or you don't have contractions if your water bag has broken it's time for you to leave for the hospital that is something which is really important the third situation could be if you or your partner are feeling nervous so if you're starting to get scared if you're starting to panic or if your husband is starting to panic then you better bring him to the hospital right because at least you will feel safer that now you are in safe hands in case something happens you're not going to create any emergency in the middle of the road and the fourth situation would be if the hospital is very far away so if the hospital is very far away and maybe there's traffic time there should there is expected to be congestion maybe heavy rains any of those situations then it's okay to come a little early we don't have any issues what is going to happen next once you arrive at the hospital the doctor who is on duty may or may not be your main doctor but in case not don't panic your doctor will surely be there soon but who, whichever doctor is on duty will check you if you are in labor you will be admitted if you are not in labor you will be sent home so don't worry this is not a punishment this is actually good because we would rather that you are in the hospital only when there is real labor if this is real labor then your vital signs such as your heartbeat your pulse your blood pressure everything is monitored and the baby's heart tones are also checked labor is then going to be allowed to progress nobody is going to sit with you and hold your hand your husband can do that and you know be with you for the entire duration of labor it does not work that way now i already told you about this that very important uh you know item that we are going to talk about so what happens in the first stage of labor this long thick and tightly closed cervix will start to shorten and this shortening of the cervix and thinning of the cervix is called effacement So if you're reading any books or you're reading any internet websites, this is what is effacement in a very simple description. After this, the cervix has to open, and the cervix has to open to a complete 10 centimeters, which is the size of the baby's head. Only once the cervix is fully open will we say that the first stage of labor is now. In the second stage of labor. all your effort is required so make sure that you don't lose heart and don't lose your energy because now you have to push the baby out the uterus will help you because there will be uterine contractions which will help with the pushing but the mother's efforts are also required if you're looking a little scared right now don't worry your doctor is going to be with you and your doctor will guide you as how you should be pushing so full guidance full support full instruction everything will be there in fact you might start thinking that you are surrounded by so many people because everyone that is required whether it's the pediatrician your doctor your nurses everyone will be present at this point of time so in the second stage of labor the baby leaves the warm cozy snug uterine environment the mother pushes the baby and the baby makes his, his or her way into the outside world once the baby is completely outside we say that the second stage of labor is now over but labor is not yet completed because there is a third stage also in the third stage of labor we are going to deliver the placenta i'm sure you have seen this word on your ultrasound reports the placenta is the organ which supplies nutrition oxygen blood all of these things to your fetus so the placenta is now a dead organ it's not required and it will follow the baby we also call the placenta the afterbirth 
we call the placenta the slave of the baby the baby is gone the placenta will also go so the contractions will resume they will be much milder the doctor will ask you to give one or two good pushes and the entire placenta will be delivered now before i talk about labor management and you know all of the tips and tricks that would help you i would like to ask dr kritika to talk to us a little bit about some of the things that can happen in this process some of the things which could be helpful to prepare you um, maybe things like uh, pain management why a cesarean may happen what are the emergency situations and of course since this is covid time if she can talk to us about uh, you know how to manage and stay safe that would be awesome so uh, over to you dr kritika thank you sonali thank you for the nice introductory talk uh, i think uh, the audience would have got a lot of information about the stages of labor and uh, how to identify labor and when to go to the hospital i think very precisely you have shared all the points to them uh, thank you to sonali and to cord life for giving me this opportunity to address all the young pregnant mothers this evening uh, with uh, sonali to answer your questions with regard to um, you know what what are the things that may go wrong in the natural labor process and um, what are the precautions you have to take during covid time uh covid time is like any other time but uh, generally more you have to check with your hospital what what policy do they have in uh, with uh, in, during this uh, covid uh, pandemic period they may some um, the, you may there may be some restrictions in the number of attenders that can come to the hospital generally we allow um, the family and lot of visitors come to visit you during the delivery and soon after the delivery but in the covid time we prefer you to keep the number of visitors and uh, minimum and only two people will be allowed to be with you during when you're admitted for labor and in the post natal period and uh, and it is also good that all pregnant mothers stay away from crowded places not forget to sanitize their hands avoid touching uh, common areas and uh, go, pra practice good uh, safety measures while breastfeeding the baby and remember to wash your hands and uh, while you are breastfeeding the baby uh, with regard to labor pain it is important for women to remember that the any uh, lot of aches and pains are very common in the third trimester once you reach about 34 weeks you are going to have a lot of back pain um, lower abdominal pain and some amount of discomfort so it is, so when you experience back pain uh, or something like it is not wrong for you to go to the hospital and get yourself checked to see if you have a true labor pain or a false labor pain uh, and uh, at the same time do not it is also important for you to remember that you should not be in a hurry to reach the finish line so that is become like a common trait among the youngsters today that as you near the due date you are in a great hurry for the baby to come out that kind of hurry should not be there you have to understand that labor and pregnancy is a natural physiological phenomenon and patience is the key to having a smooth delivery experience patience both by the uh, by the mother to be and your doctor is key vital in having a smooth and safe delivery experience so and uh, uh, whenever the your doctor may decide to take you up for a c section if uh, there are any problems uh, during the course of your labor so uh, the most commonly encountered problems would be any any um, uh, deceleration or any slowing of the heartbeat that as long as the baby's heartbeat is good and it is monitored by your cardio tocograph it is similar to doing a ecg for an adult if the ctg is showing good 
heart uh, heart changes and the uh, the heartbeat is maintained within the permissible limits then usually it is a good sign that labor is progressing smoothly and the baby is not under any stress and that will reassure us to wait further and further in your labor without panicking so the commonest reason is any changes or fluctuations in the heartbeat and decelerations or dip in the heartbeat which will which is an indicator of distress in your baby and uh, natural labor usually takes in a first time mom is long and you have to be mentally prepared to go through a uh, most of the time it takes at least a minimum of uh, 8 to 12 hours and sometimes it may take even one and a half days it is important for mothers to be mentally prepared and uh, not be anxious to see the end of the delivery and learn to stay calm and uh, practice breathing exercises which i'm sure sonali will teach you towards the end of this se uh, session practice breathing listen to your doctor uh, educate yourself throughout the pregnancy in such a way that you are able to have a con healthy conversation with your doctor and and understand the pros and cons and what are the risks and benefits of your decisions during the labor process so it is important for you to make informed choices and have a healthy conversation with your doctor to make the right choice time and uh, with regard to pain relief in labor many women now are uh, opting for painless delivery and pain free labor it is a, a newer modality of treatment which is gaining popularity in the, during the recent times in india it has been there for close to 10 years now but of late many people because of the social media awareness and because many youngsters are learning about birth choices across the globe uh, painless labor and pain, epidural anesthesia during labor is very abroad in us united states of america and many people come to know of it through their friends and are asking for epidural anesthesia in labor yes it is a good option to take it is important that you and your husband are well aware of labor, painless pain free labor painless normal delivery and educate yourself about the pros and cons of that after you cross a certain centimeter uh, about 3 or 2 to 3 centimeters of dilatation in, in your labor your doctor will make a decision to give you epidural anesthesia in labor it gives very good pain relief and many mothers are really happy about uh, epidural anesthesia during labor and it is important for you to prior to you going into labor so that you are able to make the right choices at the time of labor what we usually see is women learn, know about it but are able to are not able to take the plunge and decide to go in for epidural at the time of labor they they don't decide either way either they are not able to bear the pain at the same time they don't want to go in for epidural because they fear giving anesthesia in the spinal cord so but there's nothing to fear that way it uh, as in every any other process it comes with its pros and cons so ha have a um, discussion with your doctor learn completely about epidural anesthesia and labor i feel it is a very safe modality of uh, treatment which keeps you comfortable throughout uh, the labor and women who are interested can think about going for painless no normal delivery through epidural anesthesia and there is also an option to use entonox it is like a gas that is kept uh, you breathe into and uh, that also kind of sedates you a bit and it gives you uh, intermittent pain relief whenever you're getting strong contractions so these are the options when it comes to painless labor another very good uh, uh, when to go to the hospital uh, um, sonali had told some very interesting points like uh, very clear cut points i would say uh, that um, you know you need to go to the hospital when you're getting
seconds within every 20 minutes. And if you are really concerned, confused, or something like that, it is not wrong for you to go check with your doctor. And if you're not in labor, you can always come go back home. Uh, but uh, don't that you should not be in a hurry to deliver the baby uh, because as um, there are two phases of labor. First phase is the latent phase. Latent phase lasts really long. So and the active phase begins only after three centimeters of di dilatation. So after so the, during the latent phase itself, uh, many women are in a hurry to deliver baby. Uh, so that kind of a restless attitude should be avoided and patience and uh, meditating, exercising and walking, walking to ease your pain and uh, spending time with your husband, spending time with your family. Yeah, these are the things that you should channelize your mind on and practicing whatever you lear learned during your birth classes, your prenatal exercise classes and practicing them. Uh, and of course, the heartbeat needs to be monitored uh, by CTG. But as long as the CTG is showing a healthy uh, heartbeat variability and brain activity of your baby through the accelerations in the CTG, it is very reassuring uh, to the, both to the medical personnel and to the mother. And that will ensure that you can wait further and further in labor. Uh, at the uh, it is important for mothers to realize that the, more than the concentrating on the mode of delivery, it is important for you to uh, remember that you have to walk home healthy uh, with a, uh, you healthy and the baby also should be healthy. So healthy and safe delivery should be your uh, primary objective and not fixate on the mode of delivery. Because um, now uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people, there is a lot of peer pressure, both from the family and friends uh, uh, circle, that uh, women are, um, I would say, being indirectly being bullied into thinking that the way to do it. And if you have not done it, you have failed as a mother, you have failed as a woman. That kind of attitude should not be there. And you should understand that you have to be logical and uh, take uh, because the line between a normalcy and a potential disaster is very thin. So you have to like make informed choices. Of course, your doctor also has to weigh the pros and cons of each and every procedure that may she may be doing on you and explain and explain to you and ensure that you have respectful maternity care. Yes. Is there anything else, Sonali, that I should say? Anything else that I should address the audience on? I uh, know, ma'am. I think you did an amazing job uh, and explained everything so well. I think that's the one very important thing, you know, that uh, the world actually beats the drum at both ends. Uh, you know, if we have a normal delivery, people will say, you know, C-sections are easy, C-sections are painless. If we have a C-section, let's say you are uh, you are not competent enough, and the same thing mm -hmm. happens for breastfeeding. So we do, we have to really be you know careful and not listen to people. We have to do what feels right to us and what feels safe to us. Okay, all right, lovely, thank you. So I'm going to move ahead now and talk a little bit about how we can take care of. Uh, so if we are you know proceeding and if everything is normal, and most women will have a vaginal birth. So let's see how we can manage the pains and etc. during labor. All right. So um, as I put up on my slide already, that uh, stress causes pain, and uh, the more relaxed a mother is, there is less stress, and therefore there is less pain. Now, the less pain that a mom will experience, obviously her birth experience, her entire labor process is going to be much more faster. And therefore, the best labor management tool that we can actually advocate, teach, want you to manage is stress management. Now, I'm going to, and this is going to be fun, right? As a child, I used to love to go and watch magic shows. 
So now we are going to do some magic tricks on how to manage labor. So the first thing is avoid screaming, right? I think this is something which uh, you must be again looking at me absolutely incredulously as to what is this? Uh, the only thing that you know about labor is uh, what you've seen in movies where the woman is sweating, everybody is panicking, the woman is screaming. And finally, there's this one loud scream and the baby comes out. So why is it that we are being told that we should not be screaming during labor? Now, there are various thought process to this. To this. It's definitely not going to harm your baby. The baby is not listening to your yelling and getting affected by it mentally. So don't worry about that. What does happen is that you are using up a lot of your energy and we don't want you to lose up all this energy we want your energy to be there so that your contractions can progress your uterus can open and you can push that baby out effectively the other thing is screaming also helps to tighten up your pelvis and i know you're not going to believe me so for helping you to understand this i'm going to make you do a very simple exercise and I would request that all of you sitting over there on your chairs are going to do this little exercise with me. All right. So let's just sit back, close our eyes, keep your facial muscles absolutely loose, calm, relaxed, peaceful. All right. Now, while you're doing this, think about what your vaginal muscles are feeling like. Right. Just think about it. Are they feeling nice and loose and relaxed? Perfect. Now, the next thing you're going to do for me is you are going to frown. You are angry. You're going to make this really grumpy face. It's as if maybe your maid hasn't come, your husband's left his wet towel on the bed, uh, you have to clean a bucket load of dishes. So you're really, really upset. So make that really grumpy face. Now feel what your vagina feels like. What did it feel like? When your facial muscles crunched up like this, your vaginal muscles also pulled in like that, isn't it? All right, now we're gonna do the third thing. You're starting to believe me, right? I'm, I'm starting to make sense. So the third thing that you're going to do for me is when I count to three, we are all going to, and I'm going to do this with you, we are all going to scream loudly. And when you scream, just feel what your vaginal muscles feel like, okay? Don't have any inhibitions, do it with me, ready? One, two. Did you feel it? Okay, I should actually ask you, did you do it? Most of you have probably not done it. Because when I said one, two, three, you looked here and you looked here and who's there in the room? Is someone listening? What, what, what will they think? Oh, no, don't think about that. Let's try it one more time together, okay? I'm going to count to three and we'll scream together. Ready? One two, three. Felt it? That's what happens. So every time you're losing energy, you're tightening up your vaginal muscles, how is that baby going to come out any faster? Right? So that's something which is very important to remember. So magic trick number one is avoid screaming. Now, if I'm not going to scream, what am I going to do? So I'm going to breathe. Now, breathing is something which is a little different during labor. I will be teaching you some pregnancy breathing also because that's on my agenda for today. But what we're going to do now is breathing for labor. So what you're going to do with me is just follow instructions. It's really simple and now no more screaming. So nobody's going to listen to what you're doing. Okay. Place one hand on your chest. Place the other hand on your abdomen. All right. Just relax. Ready? What you're going to do first is imagine that a contraction is coming on. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe in through Blow out through your mouth. Make it really short breaths. So breathe, blow. This is what it's going to look like. Okay? Think about it. Keep going. Keep going. The hand which is on the chest will keep rising and falling. The hand which is on the abdomen will be steady because the abdomen is not moving. The air is not going all the way to the lower abdomen. So all the time that the contraction is going on, we're going to continue doing this. Okay. Now take a deep breath in and relax. 
Breathe normally. Let yourself go loose, limp, completely relaxed, as if you are floating on a cloud. Keep your thoughts neutral. Keep your mind positive. Think about nice things. Think about really positive things. Think about your favorite ice cream. Sounds yummy? Think about your favorite holiday destination. Think about your favorite dress. Think about all the nice things, right? Think about the time that your husband told you he loves you. That's how you're supposed to do, behave or think or plan in between contractions, okay? Now you can feel another contraction coming on. Keep your body completely relaxed, the same way it was. Take a deep breath in, exhale, breathe in through the nose, blow out through the mouth. And the contraction is disappearing. Take a deep breath in and relax. Once again, go to your happy place. Relax your body. Let yourself go loose and limp. Allow your shoulders to slump. Think you're a bird flying in the sky. Think you're a fish swimming in the water. Think that it's the middle of the night and you're walking along with your favorite person on warm sand with the waves lapping at your feet. Think about your baby. Think about the baby's cute little face, tiny little hands, tiny little nose, those little small... That's what I want. I want you to be calm. I want you to think nice things. I want you to be smiling from within. In between contractions, it's very important that you conserve your energy. All right. And now you can feel your third contraction coming on. The last one. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe in through your nose. Blow out through your mouth. It's just short breaths only till the chest, the abdomen is not moving. Keep going. And you can feel the contraction disappear. So take a deep breath in and relax. I made you do three, right? What I want you to do is once you reach week 28, then you're going to do five such contraction breaths every day. So one minute of the breathing and one minute of the relaxation. Then one minute of the breathing and one minute of the relaxation. In your mind, keep giving yourself those thoughts that, okay, there's a contraction, I have to manage it. I'm not going to scream. And then I'm going to think of all the nice things in the world. I'm not going to think, where's the doctor? Why this baby is not coming? How many more centimeters? I'm not going to think like that, right? I'm only going to think nice things so that I can conserve my energy in between contractions. Why am I making you breathe? First and foremost, it distracts you. I'm sure even now when you did this three contractions with me, simulated ones, you enjoyed it, isn't it? It felt good, especially when I made you think of all those nice things. It definitely increases your oxygen intake. So it improves the oxygen levels in your muscles. Any muscle which is deprived of oxygen is going to pain. And we want to take care of pain. So if I keep making you do your breathing, your oxygen levels will be normal. Right? It is going to give oxygen to your baby. That is also something which is very important. Every time the uterus contracts, the baby is also getting a tight squeeze, which is great. The baby, a full term healthy baby will enjoy it. It's fun. It's like, you know, being on a roller coaster. But 
uh, if the oxygen levels drop, the baby is not going to be happy. And sometimes when the mother is screaming, not breathing, the oxygen levels can reduce because the placenta and the umbilical cord are also getting squeezed. And when I scream, I can't breathe, right? There's only that one passageway that remains open at one time. Either I can eat or I can breathe or I can talk. So screaming is as good as talking. We definitely can't breathe while talking. Okay. Obviously, if the oxygen levels to the baby are correct, there will be less chances of fetal distress. The baby will be in a happy state. The heart rate will be maintained. And as the doctor mentioned, the CTG will show very, very positive uh, indications. So making sure that the baby stays fit, fine, and healthy. And obviously, all these things are happening. The pain management is much better. Now, the third magic trick is I want you to visit the bathroom. Now, let's take a look at what's happening in this pelvis, right? This is your pelvis. Now, here you have your bowels. This is your rectum, right? As you can see, my arrow, this is your rectum. Remember, we spoke about multiple bowel movements, maybe loose motions prior to the onset of labor. Now, this has made the bowels empty. When the bowels are empty, there is going to be more space for the baby to come out. On the other side over here, we have your bladder. And if I send you to the washroom every 45 minutes to an hour during labor, of course, if everything is healthy, fit and fine, then your bladder is also going to be empty. And this is going to mean more space for the birth canal. And that is your birth canal. This is where the baby is going to come out from, which is between the bowels and the bladder. So it definitely makes the whole birth process a little bit more faster. There's another advantage. Have you ever thought what you feel when you pass urine? You are completely relaxed. That's your expression, isn't it? Have you ever been able to pass urine like this? No way. It's not possible. So at least when I send you to the bathroom or when you pass urine, you will relax for those few moments and that will make sure that this entire area is kept loose and relaxed. Then magic trick number four is try to be in an upright position. When you are in an upright position, you are going to get the advantage of gravity. And gravity is what is going to help the baby sink lower and lower and lower. So along with the uterine contractions, along with the forces of the baby, there is also going to be the force of Mother Earth which will help you. The other thing that you should know, if I am a woman and I'm lying down, so this is me lying down. This side is my uterus. This side is the exit of the vagina. I'm not flat like this when I'm lying down. I'm actually, I have a tilted curve like this. So the baby has to exit from here, do an upward climb, and then only is able to exit. However, if I have a mother who is a little proactive and who tries to be upright, not for the entire duration of labor, of course, but for quite a lot of times during labor, then this is the position that will happen. So the baby has to do a downward climb. So I, I can understand, right? I mean, if you are going to be in some hill station while going to the hill station, it obviously is a lot more, it takes more time when you're coming back, you know, from all your uh, holidays, the downhill from the mountain is much easier. I'm not saying that you have to be sitting upright all the time. If you're tired, you should lie down. But don't be a person who reaches the hospital and just because you see that bed, you lie down on it. Be active. If your pregnancy is healthy, if labor is progressing in a healthy manner, be active, be mobile, be upright. And then, of course, comes movement. And that's your fifth magic trick. So now I'm going to give you a simple explanation. Right. Remember storytelling. So I, I have to clean all the pillows of my house. I mean, all the bed sheets of my house. I'm changing all the bed covers. If I want to remove the pillows from the pillow covers, what will I do? Will I go next to the bed, pick up the pillow and hold it and wait and wait and wait? Do you think that pillow is going to come out? Not really. 
what will happen is that i'll be only waiting and if i want to remove the pillow genuinely and this is i'm sure what all of you do you will shake that pillow cover you pull that pillow a little bit and you're done and then you'll move on to the next pillow and the next and the next and you're done in like two minutes the same way think about it like this the uterus is the pillow cover the baby is the pillow and if you want to get that baby out a little bit more faster and if you're allowed to then walk around maybe squat maybe do some lunges uh maybe dance that's also okay if you know belly dancing was actually considered to be a birthing dance what fun right so a little bit of movement especially swaying of the hips nice circular movements pelvic rotations they can actually help the baby to move down a little bit more faster now i understand that it might not be possible to do this during a contraction but you can do this in between contractions that is something that can be really really helpful these are some natural pain relief options uh keep them in mind the first as i told you stress management so relax if you feel the tension mounting up just calm yourself down tell your partner whoever is going to be with you during labor that if you are getting tense if you're getting worried they should kind of try to distract you they should kind of you know talk to you they should kind of maybe you know reassure you so just help you to relax i've taught you the breathing exercises don't wait to practice them if you wait till you go into labor they will not help you because it's a little different so you need to make sure that you practice well in advance massage can be very very helpful during labor and i'm going to show you a few massage points also which can be enjoyable the fourth thing is imagery the way i painted images for you about your baby about your favorite food about your yummy ice cream so just paint a lot of wonderful images in your mind which can help to keep your mind happy and finally is diversion whatever distracts you some people like to listen to music maybe you like to watch tv some favorite shows maybe you like to chant so whatever distracts your mind whatever diversion techniques work for you is something that you should use these are your massage uh, positions maybe the lower back that's the area which most mothers love a massage during pregnancy during labor the shoulders and the neck because that's a major tension area isn't it so that can be really helpful some mothers also like a massage on their abdomen uh, but abdomen massage should be very very gentle no hard movements just gentle effleurage kind of movements is what is required on the abdomen sorry this slide got a little repeated as far as eating and drinking is concerned please check with your doctor because it all depends on your pregnancy situation but during labor and we go to the last point first if you eat large meals and if you eat a lot it may cause vomiting because you're in pain right i mean no one is saying that there's going to be no pain there will be pain so with pain you may end up vomiting and god forbid if an emergency surgery is required then that can prove risky if you've got your stomach completely full with very very heavy food what you can do is you can sip on water or you can suck on ice chips the reason why we are using water and ice chips is because it helps to keep you hydrated and it also is a cooling effect you're you're in labor you're working hard so your metabolism is completely revved up and you need to kind of cool your body down in case ice chips are not available cool water or cold water can also be helpful small bites of high sugar foods can be really helpful don't gobble up an entire glucose biscuit packet but half a biscuit if you nibble on that maybe some glucose water maybe some small pieces of chocolate or toffees these can be really helpful in giving you some quick bursts of energy and they are also really small in content so they don't pose a risk of either vomiting or a surgical problem um let's talk a little bit about your diet uh because as i told you that you know one of the things that is required for preparation for labor is preparing your body if i want to run a marathon i cannot expect to run a marathon tomorrow morning i have to prepare i have to train 
training will involve a good diet regular exercise mind conditioning so much isn't it so one of the things that you should do in the 9 months that god has given you is prepare your body and the main thing is also your diet it's going to nourish your baby it's going to keep you healthy and it's also going to build your immunity so eat a balanced diet make sure you eat all the food groups don't leave out anything when you make your plate it should have your carbs which are your cereals so you can have your idli dosa uttapams uh, upmas all of those things will come into your cereals it should have your fruits and vegetables whichever are available in season you should also have good amount of protein because that is what is going to make your baby it's the building block of cells so include your pulses if you're a non vegetarian you can have all the non vegetarian foods so check in with your doctor and see what is healthy for you make sure you have adequate calcium so whether it's in the form of curds milk uh, cottage cheese you should make sure you have enough calcium rich foods in your diet and last is include healthy fats healthy fats will come from you know things which are unsaturated so choose things like olive oil almonds walnuts flax seeds don't try to focus on too much of fried foods have all these things in a limited quantity the next thing you remember is eat every 2 to 3 hours because you need to maintain your sugar levels and the baby is eating 24 by 7 the baby doesn't wait for every 2 to 3 hours to eat right the baby is going to be eating all the time so we need to make sure that our sugar levels are maintained eat every 2 to 3 hours so that your nutrient levels do not drop drink plenty of water it will help your digestion digestive system and it will also ensure that your amniotic fluid levels are maintained and finally most important don't forget to take your prenatal supplements if there is something that doesn't suit you please do let your doctor know so that another alternative can be prescribed the second thing that will be working here during pregnancy as far as preparation is concerned is regular exercise and my first line itself says that it will prepare your body for labor but of course it is also going to help to reduce aches and pains it will help to relax you it's going to help you to sleep better and it also helps fetal development there are many studies which have shown that mothers who exercise in moderation during pregnancy will have babies who are also technically exercising inside so they have better heart strength they have better metabolism So check in with your doctor if you are allowed to exercise definitely include some exercises in your daily routine the safest exercise that you can do is walking it doesn't require supervision but it definitely still requires permission so before you start that you know i'm ready for my walk don't don't forget to ask your doctor don't just go for a walk please go for the walk correctly wear good walking shoes carry a bottle of water eat a small snack before you go and walk at a brisk pace don't go for a stroll that's not the idea we want you to focus it's an exercise it's not a time for chit chat on the phone while you're walking around right you can take up antenatal exercises but because you may be new to it it's a good idea to take it up under supervision or guidance even now during covid times there are lots of online classes happening i know we are also running them so regular classes are available look them up see if you can get some guidance even if it's for a few sessions so that you can learn and you can follow them on your own then whatever you do include some breathing exercises in your routine also and i'm going to show you what i mean by that just to give you a little bit of an idea these are some good birth preparation exercises that you can include in your daily routine as you can see in the first picture the lady is doing squats and squats are considered to be the holy grail of all sorts of pregnancy related preparation isn't it to so keep your legs wide take some support if needed if the, you sh- i don't want you to fall i don't want you to lose your balance so take some support if needed and slowly come down till your thighs are parallel to the ground i would suggest please start with eight counts and if once your stamina builds up once you feel comfortable you can increase to 12 16 maybe more also so depending on how you feel comfortable you can increase the number of squats 
my classes do about 80 to 100 squats also in so this is something which is a goal it's not a it's not something that oh my god i can't do this that's not the idea i'm really telling you start with eight and slowly build up because you have may not have done this before so we don't want to create any risk for you right the second position as you can see is called the butterfly position this is my favorite you can sit in this position when you're watching tv when you down if you feel tired you can stretch your legs out you can also flap them up and down so that gives you that butterfly movement which can be really helpful and it's great for stretching that pelvis of yours right the third exercise as you can see is a sideline position where the mother is doing leg raises right so lie down on a mat please don't do it on a bed because your body will not be stable lie down on a mat uh, keep your body nice and straight in a nice straight line so from your head to your buttocks it should be one straight line the lower leg is folded and the upper leg has to be opened as far as possible to 90 degrees okay once again start with eight counts for each leg and slowly build up you can even do about four to five sets for each leg once you are strong enough the lady who's sitting uh, on the pot on the commode in pink uh, in the lower part of my screen she is doing what is called kegels the reason we have the commode picture is because it's your pelvic floor it's your vaginal muscles which we're working out but i don't want you to do it on the commode i don't want you to do it while stopping the flow of urine because that can damage your bladder muscles but what i want you to do is while sitting on the bed imagine that you're trying to stop the flow of urine hold and release hold and release imagine okay hold release now again a few more things make sure your breathing is normal don't tighten your abdominal muscles don't hold your breath anywhere okay let's try it again hold and release hold and release right so this exercise is going to help to strengthen your pelvic floor muscles your pelvic floor is carrying everything in your body it's carrying all your organs it's taking all the weight and now it has to carry the baby's weight also it has to carry the extra weight of the uterus the extra weight of the placenta the extra weight of the amniotic fluid so obviously the pelvic floor becomes loose and weak and you might encounter leaking urine urinary incontinence during your pregnancy that's not fun you don't want to be constantly changing your panties every time because every time you laugh you cough you sneeze there's little leaking should not happen isn't it so that is something that you can do your kegels it will help second when you're pushing second stage of labor you have strong vaginal muscles because they will help in the final pushing and the third is after delivery we want to work on that too right we want to be normal again we want our vagina to be tight and healthy and normal so start doing your kegels again. And the last one, as you can see, the woman sitting calmly, she's doing deep breathing. When I say deep breathing, the air goes from your nose, down, all the way through your chest, into your abdomen, lower abdomen, till your groin. So think that your body is a balloon, it's filling up, and then it's slowly exhaling. So it's filling up. And it's slowly exhaling, right? So that's something that you have to keep in mind as far as your deep breathing is concerned. Can we try a few deep breaths together? Take a deep breath in, exhale. Don't hold your breath anywhere. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, right? 40 to 50 deep breaths every day. That is very important. And uh, do it in a non-air conditioned environment. Uh, do it in the morning because morning the air is a little bit fresher. There's less pollution. It's been cleaned up in the night. Uh, so that's a good time to do your deep breathing.
I have a beautiful picture of a baby right there. That's exactly what your birth is. It brings this beautiful baby to you. So birth is a new beginning. Please welcome it with positivity. So I'm going to show you a very quick, tiny video. Uh, this is about, uh, you know, how parenting begins. So let's take a look at it. All right, and as I had promised you, there is a little gift at the end of so a gift coupon worth rupees thousand, which is coming to you from Hungry Brain. Hungry Brain, a company which produces, manufactures, supplies, call it what you like, uh, brain stimulation kits for the newborn. So uh, you can use this voucher to do a little bit of shopping for your little baby. Uh, which you can start using as soon as the baby is born. Um, as I already told you, the Cod Life team will be in touch with you. They will be sharing the recording of this session and they will also share this coupon with you. So in about 48 to 72 hours, you can expect a call from them. Uh, they will also ask if you would like to know more about stem cell banking and you can take a present all your questions answered which can be through a video call, a Zoom call, or even a personal meeting if you prefer. So whatever you feel comfortable, you can decide and clear up all your doubts. This is a little bit about me. I also am a little bit of a writer. So I have these three books which are available on Amazon. The first is Prenatal Fitness, which is all about exercises during pregnancy and even post delivery. And every page has pictures, lots and lots of pictures about the exercise poses. Uh, then there's parenting mantras, which is all about taking care of your baby from breastfeeding to baby bath, baby massage, uh, why babies cry, sleep schedules, lots of things. And then you have super mom's recipes, which is all about foods you can give your baby after the baby starts eating. Older children, but nevertheless, these are all my passion areas. Uh, we're going to open the floor to questions now, and uh, I've put my personal details here, my website, my Instagram and Facebook handle, which is at baby360 degrees. So please do make sure that you follow because I keep posting a lot. Plus, I do a lot of fun contests and I answer questions quite regularly. So that's a fun place to be. And uh, then I also have a YouTube channel, which is the Pregnancy Coach by Baby360 Degrees with lots of videos. So I look forward to you subscribing to my channel so you can keep getting updates from me. I've also uh, put in some phone numbers, which is by the Cod Life team. That's the team which has brought this session to us. This has organized this lovely platform for us to talk to you. So I have uh, all the phone numbers of Cod Life, uh, calling number, WhatsApp number, toll free number, and even an SMS number. So I'm going to leave the screen on so you can write all these things down so that you don't miss all this information. I would like to say a big thank you to Dr. Kritika for taking her time and to speak to all of you. And the floor is open to questions. Dr. Kritika is also with us. 
So I will open the question box. I'm going to read out the questions one by one and she will help answer them. Um, also, uh, you can keep putting questions because we're still here to answer them all. So just give me a second. I'm getting right there. Okay. Uh, all right. So right now, ma'am, there is one question which is asking about repetition the breathing exercise. So while more questions are coming, I'm going to just demonstrate the breathing exercise again. So uh, imagine that you're coming on. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe in through your nose. Blow out through your mouth. It's short breaths. Breathing in through the nose. Blowing out through the mouth. Only till the chest. Keep breathing like a minute. And then when the contraction is gone, take a deep breath in and relax. So when the contraction is gone, you just breathe normally and you think peacefully. Don't okay? All right. So, uh, ma'am, here we have the second question. And uh, I think that's something which you can answer. In this pandemic time, is there a COVID test done before the delivery? Um. Uh, uh, Ideally, it depends upon your hospital policy. Um, uh, many hospitals ask, admit the patient. I mean, if they are not tested for COVID, they are admitted separately in a separate block. And if they are tested for COVID, they are uh, and it is negative, they are, they are admitted separately. Uh, they are kept in a waiting area, and then once the test results come, they are shifted to a, the main block. That's how the policy is. It all depends upon what your doctor chooses. But having said that, uh, many a times in in pregnancy, we are not able to like strictly follow COVID testing uh, for everybody because we are very often taken by surprises. A mother comes in labor very early or her test is done, but she comes in labor much later. So we are open to taking up mothers. A mother needs to be delivered, whatever be. So we have we ha generally follow universal pr precautions and go ahead with delivering the mother and the baby. And it is obstetrics is not a branch where we can be very stringent and put our foot down and say you have to have a test or else I'm not going to deliver your baby. So we need to, you know, it depends upon the situation actually. Right. OK, so the next question, ma'am, is are there any complications or side effects involved after the delivery when you use an epidural anesthesia? No, there aren't any major. Uh, the side effects are like for any other anesthesia only. And there is no increased risk just because you had an epidural. There is no uh, increased risk or even if you are in the right hands, there is no increased risk or side effects of having an epidural. It will either it will give you a very good pain relief. That is the only possible effect. Side effects are almost negligible when it comes to having an epidural. If you are in with experienced hands and they know that there are some CTG changes that can happen, but your doctor should be uh, trained enough to interpret them with relation to, to your epidural and predict the outcome. So I would say you don't have to worry about the side effects before choosing for epidural. It is only based on whether you want it or not, uh, whether you're able to manage the pain uh, without an epidural or not. That should be the main crux of your decision. All right. Um, so the next question, ma'am, says, how long does a labor continue for a preemie mother? In a primary mother, you have to be mentally prepared to have a long labor. If you are a if you are the lucky few who is going to have a short labor, well and good. Your doctor is happy. You're happy. But generally, a primary, I would say a, a minimum of eight to twelve hours is what you're looking at. And uh, most of the time, primaries take a long time to deliver. Compared to a second time or a third time mom. The duration of uh, labor keeps decreasing with the number of babies you are having. Right. Thank you. Uh, the next, next question, ma'am, says, is normal delivery possible for an obese mother if pregnancy is healthy throughout? Yes, it is certainly possible for obese. Uh, just because you're obese, it doesn't mean that it is not 
uh, uh, possible for you to deliver by normal delivery uh, and of course you have to keep in mind that you should not gain too much weight during delivery or and try to be physically active throughout the delivery uh, that compared to a thin lean mom a obese mom there is a slightly i would say the percentage is little less but it doesn't negate the possibility of you having a normal delivery at all so you can you know you need not be paranoid about it just because you are obese it doesn't mean that your chances are dim at all all right okay uh, how can we differentiate between normal pregnancy discharge and pre labor mucus discharge pre labor mucus discharge is usually blood stained whereas a normal discharge is only uh, uh, you know um, white and it is sticky and it is a like your white discharge that you would experience even when you are not pregnant whereas definitely you would be able to if it is a show it would be mixed it will be pinkish or it will be reddish mixed with white so you will be able to differentiate that and you need not worry too much about it okay I uh, always go to a doctor because there are conditions where you, there are bleeding also. You can bleed also, and it it is due to the premature separation of your placenta. So if you are in doubt, get checked, and and if your doctor is reassuring you, you can uh, you know uh, relax. Sounds good. All right. So uh, the next mother says, "I'm in my first trimester. I feel so tired. I cannot do my routine work." how to manage the situation please give me a tip i am a working mother too uh see since you are a working mother you are bound to experience your this tiredness and morning sickness definitely you are going to uh, face i mean uh, suffer because of it more than a mom who has more control over her time and who's at home who can choose to relax when she wants but uh, this is a part of the pregnancy and you should learn to you know take it one day at a time use some symptomatic relief and uh, like you can take a pill or you can relax or have some juice to hydrate yourself or take a quick nap this is all you, i can tell you but eventually you're going to this initial morning sickness you're going to grow out of it and after 16 17 weeks you're not going to feel it anymore so you have to be a little patient for now all right so i think i can add a little bit of my own personal experience yes. okay. when i was pregnant the first time and i have been a very active person uh, my husband used to find me fast asleep on the couch at 5:30 in the evening because i would come home from work or whatever wherever i was and i would first lie down on my couch to stretch my legs out and i would fall asleep so soundly for 2 hours that there was nothing that could wake me up uh in my second pregnancy when i started sleeping like that even before doing the pregnancy test he started laughing and saying i think you're pregnant so mm -hmm. it's a very common thing in the first trimester look at it this way your baby from a single cell is going to become a full baby by the time the baby is 3 months uh, into the pregnancy it's a completely formed baby so there is so much work that your body is doing entire energy is going there which is why this exhaustion and tiredness happens just make sure you eat healthy uh, make sure you drink plenty of fluids and uh, don't think of yourself as a super woman that i have to do everything delegate some chores so if working is important and you need to go out to uh, to finish your work then for household chores ask people for help including your husband there's no harm he can also contribute a little bit in the uh, housework right okay uh, ma'am next question if the water releases what is the first uh, step that needs to be done uh, if the water break if your water breaks you need to go to the hospital uh, it is it, water breaking doesn't mean it's an immediate emergency it doesn't mean that the next minute the baby has to be uh, out it means that your labor has started of course your doctor will probably give you some antibiotics to prevent infection from below going up inside the uterus and uh, affecting the uterus and your baby but uh, you have to remember that it is uh, you have to go to the hospital yet it doesn't mean some it is a you know an immediate emergency alarming and uh, the next minute you need to be delivered of your baby it doesn't mean that so if water breaking is also a sign of starting of your labor 
so you can relax and go to your hospital all right so the next question is how can we avoid preterm labor preterm it is not in your hands to avoid a preterm labor uh, some women go into preterm labor um, i mean based on the, the uterus and based on what health condition they have so if you've had a preterm labor in your previous pregnancy and uh, in this pregnancy you want to avoid a pre preterm uh, pre labor there are some steps that you can take to avoid your baby being born prematurely prematurely and being admitted in the nicu we can uh, there are some medicines and some surgical intervention and some ultrasound monitoring that we can do to predict if you are at risk for going into preterm labor but by and large it is not something you went into pre it's not your mistake that you went into a preterm labor so you don't have to worry about it if you are otherwise low risk mom wonderful um the next mother wants to know about the vaginal tear or the episiotomy episiotomy um episiotomy is uh, the incision that your doctor may makes to you know make the uh, make your vagina a little bit roomy for the head to come down it uh, vaginal tear is what happens naturally when the baby is heading when when your doctor is not making the incision and the baby is coming down by itself sometimes the vagina tears here and there on its own that is the difference between both and uh, whether or not you need an episiotomy will be decided based on a case basis at that point of time by your doctor based on how roomy your vagina is what is the baby's position and uh, and all these things right and how long it takes for the baby to descend down and things like that okay um so this is about ivf if i have no complications but i have conceived through ivf can i have a normal delivery generally our threshold is very low when we uh, uh, when it's an ivf pregnancy to think about giving her a delivery because it is most uh, ivf itself uh, the success percentage is only 40% even at the best hands the success percentage is only 40 uh, so when you have conceived after that so you pros and cons and on a case basis you can be analyzed and then decided whether a normal delivery is possible for you but i would say that uh, generally if along with ivf you have one more factor that is not suitable for a vaginal delivery uh, it is better you go for a planned c section because it is important you walk home with the baby and uh, with a healthy baby without any complications and keep things simple nowadays c section there is increased safety profile and increased safety in c section deliveries also so it is uh, not needed for you to fixate too much on that and be a little open to both the possibilities all right uh, how much is the ideal weight gain during pregnancy the weight gain in your pregnancy depends upon what your what weight you were to start, to begin with and based on that only your weight gain i would say on an average 10 to 11 kgs would be ideal uh my eighth month is about to start when should i pack my hospital bag you can pack your bag now now you can start packing slowly one at a time as in when you remember you can start planning uh, plan, start packing your bag it helps you know to divert your mind what keep you positive what happened, what happened with me yes. when i uh, when i packed my bag and i had kept it safely and then my mother told me that i cannot stay alone at home so she wanted me to stay with her i slept <laughs> overnight with her and uh, i went into labor and my bag was at home and i was somewhere else so i reached the hospital without the bag so in case okay. you do hospital bag don't worry it's okay the baby is still going to be born whether you have your clothes or no it doesn't matter don't panic about <laughs> most okay. of the time uh, begin yeah. with whatever you need your hospital will be able to give you at least we do in our hospital we are able to give whatever you need for the first 24 hours we'll be able to get you and there's always time for to send somebody home and get your bag so don't worry that should not be a stressful factor it's yeah. perfectly okay and any which way is you know ma'am i think what happens is half the time clothes are not fitting you so uh -huh. you know i 
I remember that I kept pulling my clothes out of that hospital bag and wearing them, washing them and putting them back because I didn't want to buy so many more clothes at that time. <laughs> so there's a lot of logistical care that has to be. So stress is not part of it. That's important. Okay. Yes. Um, how do I get released from frequent back pain? I'm in my 32nd week of pregnancy. Mm, yes, uh, you are bound to experience some back pain. You can do a little bit of exercises, which will help you to you know loosen up the stiff muscles and also you can use hot water uh, compression to relieve of your pain or ap apply any oil or any um, anything emollient that will give you some kind of a soothing effect and ask somebody your partner or your mom to give you a gentle massage uh, but uh, as the pregnant belly is growing you are bound to experience some amount of back pain um, so taking care of your posture will help. Take good back yes. support while sitting. Wear the right shoes. Don't stand for a long time. Uh, and always sit comfortably. You know, take good cushions and all and then support your back and sit. So that should also give you relief. Okay, uh, the next question is, can yeast infection during pregnancy affect the uterus or the baby? No, a little bit of infection in the vagina is very common. Uh, so you have to go meet your doctor. She'll probably take a swab and also give you some medications to control your infection. But it is it doesn't mean that if you have a yeast infection, definitely it's going to uh, affect your baby. No, it is quite common. It's a quite common occurrence in the nine months. Okay, the next couple of questions are related to heartburn and acidity during pregnancy. Any tips, ma'am? Um, hard one, you should take small frequent meals, avoid heavy meals just before you go to sleep. And soon after your, me your meals, don't lie down. Keep two pillows at your head end and uh, lie down And uh, when you're lying down after, after for uh, sleep. Uh, avoid very spicy uh, masala dar food. All these things will probably ensure. And of course, there are medicines that you can take similar to Jelusil, Sucrafil, all of that which will give you some relief from the burning sensation. Some antacids are safe in pregnancy. You can go ahead and have them. All right. Uh, are abdominal cramps uh, normal during pregnancy? Uh, it depends upon which week you are in. If you are if you're very much preterm and you're experiencing cramps, it may be a sign of an imminent preterm labor. So get yourself checked with your doctor and make sure there's nothing wrong. If you're nearing to a term and you're nearing your due date, yes, it is a normal thing to experience cramps as you come closer to the uh, your delivery, expected date of delivery. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, I had a C-section in my first delivery. Is there any chance to have a normal delivery in the second one? You can try for a normal delivery. Again, it depends upon, uh, it is not, no, but it will not be called as a normal delivery. It will be a vaginal birth after C-section, a V-back. Uh, it depends upon the baby's weight, your pelvis, and what indication you went in for the C-section for the, in your first delivery. All these points need to be considered before uh, letting you know if you are eligible to go ahead for a V-back. We back, there is a small but significant percentage of risk in going in for a we back after a first C section. So it is, uh, you have to have a conversation with your doctor and come to a conclusion on a case to case basis. Okay. Uh, does my grief affect the baby? I have had a loss of a dear one and I am in the seventh month of pregnancy. I'm sorry about your loss, but. Um, but usually it doesn't, As uh, we want you to be happy and uh, at peace. But generally it will not have a direct effect on uh, your grief and your mental stress will not have a direct effect on the baby. So take time to come out of your grief and uh, be easy on yourself. I, it is not going to affect the baby. So don't be paranoid about it. Give your Give some time to yourself to recover from the loss of your dear one. Okay, um, so we'll take this as the last question. What should be the ideal sleeping position in the third trimester? Um, you can, uh, it is good to lie on your sides and on your left lateral side. It is good to lie down on the lateral side, that is on one side. 
but it doesn't mean that if in your deep sleep you lie on your back it means that baby is going to have an immediate disaster and danger so it is important for you to sleep well i would say so don't be uh, too worried about posture as so much so that you don't get enough sleep okay all right there is one last question and it's come at 8 o'clock so we will take it uh, is the husband allowed ma'am uh, with the wife uh, during the labor yes mo it, it again depends upon uh, your doctors uh, and your hospital policy but i think now most hospitals do allow husbands to be along with the wife during labor and it also depends on the husband if you feel that your husband is not comfortable don't force him i know we don't want to create an emergency where the husband is you know having problems and then the doctors to take care of the husband so husband whatever or your mom or your mom in law or your friend a good birth companion wonderful all right so i think we managed to take all the questions uh oh, okay so the this is the husband asking the question lovely wonderful yes definitely so you're comfortable you're allowed all right <laughs> <laughs> the husband questioning okay. okay. it's so nice that the husbands are also listening today i i'm really really happy it, it's one of the one of the things which i always encourage you know and even my classes that uh, husband and wife should attend together it's really important so thank you so much uh, thank you ma'am thank you for all the valuable time you've really taken thank so much online. time yeah and uh, thank you to cod life for giving us this platform thank you to all the attendees uh for being patient i think we had good attendance right from the beginning to the end uh so thank you so much i think we were entertaining enough uh <laughs> have a great uh, uh day ahead uh enjoy the day and stay safe thank you ma'am have a nice day see you bye